So, this is the lecture 6 and the first module neural networks the course on intelligent control. Today, we will uh, take up a new uh, uh, another architecture of uh, learning system uh, that is used widely in control system. This is called radial basis function network and uh, uh, the network architecture is uh, uh, given here. You can see is that it has three layers. Uh, first layer is as usual the input layer the second layer which is hidden layer is different uh, from the uh, the computational unit in the in the hidden layer they are different uh, in structure compared to the multi layer network that we discussed uh, these uh, computational units are known as radial centers it is radial center because uh, if i look at c1 C 1 has uh, the same uh, is uh, this is uh, P into 1 vector. So, same is same is x vector which is P into 1 the input vector and this uh, centers uh, they represent the clusters the centers here they represent the clusters in the input space the C 1, C 2 and C H they represent the clusters in the input space. So, C i's represent clusters in the input space. The output of each center is uh, which is phi i, the output phi i is, uh, uh, is a function is a function of the distance Euclidean distance between C i and x. So, you can say that now the the, the computational unit is has a different function than the than the uh, the multilayer network and then what you are seeing is that uh, we compute this phi i this so the, the c i's are known as radial centers they represent small clusters in a, in the new in, in, in the input space and then the y the output is simply summation the output is simply summation of phi i w i okay, i equal to 1 to h. So, this is a uh, uh, this is the structure of a radial uh, basis function network. Uh, there are certain advantages we will talk about let me say what we talked just now. So, radial basis function networks consist of three layers input layer, hidden layer and output layer. Unlike in multi layer network you can have n as many hidden layers as many hidden layers you can have, but here you can have only one hidden layer and the computational units in the hidden layer has a different function than that of multi layer network. The hidden units provide a set of functions that constitute an arbitrary basis of input patterns. Hidden units are known as radial centers and represented by the vectors c 1, c 2, c h and they have the same uh, 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 vector dimension as that of the input x. Transformation from input space to hidden unit space is nonlinear, whereas the transformation from the hidden unit space to output space is linear that is what we talked about that here the phi phi i's is a nonlinear transformation of x input. Actually, this is a function of the norm the, or the Euclidean distance, uh, Euclidean distance between C i and x, which we normally represent by the second norm. Uh, and also, we talked about 
that so this is nonlinear phi i is a nonlinear function of x i whereas y the output is a linear function of phi. So, there is a difference and dimension of each center for a p input network is p by 1 that I have already told. So, this is our network that we discussed and uh, the radial basis functions in the hidden layer produces a significant non-zero response only when the input falls within a small localized region of the input space. So, to explain this uh, let me explain this. Uh, so, we are talking about uh, input space all right. So, these data they are they belong to this input space. So, the input space instead of being represented by each and every data the principle in radial basis function network is say for example, the inputs are data as say they are all distributed in the training set like this. So, if this is the data I mean each point represent a data in this input space. So, we can easily say okay, let us select from this bulk of uh, data two clusters here another two cluster here another two cluster here. This is a small data point one cluster another cluster. What is meaning of cluster? This is another point that represent the data around this. Similarly, this is another po point which represent the data around this. So, what happens? So, when the input data is very near to this cluster, then the output of this cluster or output this of this center is uh, will be maximum. Uh, and the, the response of this radial center. So, what let, let me let me first uh, clarify what I am trying to tell you. What I am telling that we have a radial center okay, and these radial centers are placed in the hidden unit and these radial centers are the clusters in the input space. Input space means a space where all possible data you know in the input uh, are located. Okay. That means, we are trying to map trying to we are trying to construct a map from the input space to output space. Okay. So, in the input space all possible all possible varieties of data are there. So, in the radial centers they represent this data. So, in a sense you know in a in an ideal case input space may contain infinite number uh, many data not infinite but many data okay and uh, the to represent this data using finite data points and these finite data points are known as clusters okay so each cluster has its own receptive field in the sense that each cluster represents certain data point and for those data point that cluster output uh, that, that radial center output will be maximum. So, that is in the hidden layer I have I place these uh, uh, clusters in this hidden layer. Okay. So, for example, this cluster is this this cluster if I say then the output of this cluster or radial center will be maximum for the data rep, uh, lying in its receptive field. And obviously, the output of this for any other data in this uh, away from this uh, radial center will be minimum. Okay. So, that is the idea. So, radial basis function in the hidden layer produces a significant non-zero response only when the input falls within a small localized region of the input space. Okay. The each hidden unit has its own receptive field in the input space, which I uh, just told you that uh, the output will become maximum 
for a radial center when the data input data belongs to its receptive field. An input vector x i which lies in the receptive field for center C j would activate C j and by proper choice of weights the target output is obtained. The output is given as y phi j w j phi j is phi x minus C j norm actually this is a phi represents a function what I said earlier. So, as uh, already I have told y output is a linear function of uh, the, uh, the, the outputs of the radial center which is phi j and phi j is a nonlinear function of x which is a, uh, is a nonlinear function of distance between x and c j. Hmm. So, phi is some radial centers and then what are these radial functions? Uh, there are certain popular radial functions. If we define z as a norm, Euclidean norm between x the input data and the center z's uh, center, we have uh, say h centers uh, we saw and uh, the z center and x the distance is Euclidean distance. Uh, you can easily say that this is uh, the Euclidean distance between x and c j and the types of uh, radial functions that normally uh, we use uh, are Gaussian radial function, thin plate spline function. Gaussian is very popular e to the power minus z square by 2 sigma square where z is the uh, Euclidean distance between the data and the radial center and similarly the the thin plate spline function z square log z and uh, phi z is uh, z square plus r square to the power half is a quadratic function uh, this uh, the third one inverse quadratic is just 1 upon z square plus r square to the power half that is root of uh, root square z square plus r square. So, normally uh, the Gaussian function has been very popular in the uh, while selecting radial center. What is the normal difference between a radial basis function network and multilayer network? The difference is a radial basis function network has a single hidden layer and multiple layer network has multiple hidden layer. So, MLN has multilayer network, RBFN has single layer, single hidden layer. The basic neural model as well as the function of the hidden layer is different from that of output layer. Uh, the output layer we have simply summation where the hidden computation is uh, as I said you their uh, function of the Euclidean distance between an input and the center where the, uh, the computational units in multi layer networks are all similar. The hidden layer is nonlinear, but the output layer is a linear here all layers are nonlinear. Uh, but not necessarily sometime you know in multi layer network also we can make the output uh, layer to be also linear. So, radial basis function network uh, activation function of the hidden unit computes the Euclidean distance between input and vector input vector and the center of that unit and activation function of the hidden unit computes uh, no it is a little different here is a function of Euclidean distance between the input vector and the center of that unit. Okay. So, the activation function is a function of Euclidean distance between input vector and the center of that unit in radial basis function network. Whereas, in multi layer network the activation function uh, computes the inner product of the input vector and the weight of that unit. In a sense it is all right uh, I can always say. So, the objective here whatever is written is just a comparison. What is happening is that the activation function is a function of Euclidean distance between input vector and the center whereas, this is an inner product the activation function is a function of inner product. Hmm. So, it is not function activation function the idea should be uh, very clear to all of you that here the active uh, the function phi 
is a function of C j, whereas this is the sigmoidal function here phi if I say it is also phi then in this case is f of uh, x transpose w ok the weight connection weight as, uh, associated with the input. So, such weight is absent in this case radial basis function network. Radial basis function network establishes a local mapping hence capable of first learning and the multilinear network constru uh, constructs a global approximation to input output mapping. Here the, the learning in the radial basis function network uh, consists of two different categories of parameter. One is centers, radial centers and the other is uh, 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 the other is the weights the connection weights in the output layer. Whereas, in multi layer network the only parameters are the synaptic weights. So, the so then what we have in a radial basis function network uh, uh, the parameters are C 1, C 2 up to C H these are all centers. and w 1, w 2, w up to w n these are weights. Okay. The weights are in the output layer and the centers are in the hidden layer. Uh, so, uh, so, the training of R v f n requires optimal selection of parameter vector c and w weight vector. So, we have to select in such a way that given x and y given this uh, set of data x and y the y d minus y. So, y d is, uh, uh, is the uh, desired output and y is the radial basis function output square half over all patterns i equal to 1 to say m okay, number of patterns. So, this cost function must be minimized. So, the objective is select C i's and W i's such that uh, this particular function is minimized. So, this is uh, the, uh, the objective. The following techniques are used to update the weights and center for RBF. There are many methods uh, by which these uh, centers and weights are all optimized. One is the very simple is pseudo inverse technique, which is an offline technique, gradient descent learning and hybrid learning. These are all online technique. Gradient descent is same as back propagation what we talked about in multilayer network. What is a pseudo inverse technique? So, this is a least cost solution. Uh, uh, what we do here, let me tell you. So, what you have here, we have inputs, then we have hidden units, then we have output unit. Okay. So, given here x p some x p we compute what is uh, y p all right. So, what we do here uh, in pseudo inverse technique radial centers are fixed are fixed. So, how we fix the radial center? because the radial center represent the clusters in the input data space. What I can do is that this is my input data space. So, I have uh, you know a stack of data input data. What I can do is that I can randomly sample this data and each data I put I assign each data each random sample from this data to C i's. 
So, what I do C i is a assign a random sample from input space. From the input space or input data, I select a random sample and assign to C i and like that I do, I assign all the centers. Okay. The objective is that centers will be so selected, they are almost like uniformly distributed in the data. That means, wherever there are more data points, from there more data should come and where there are less data points. Like for example, in this zone there are more data points, okay. in this point there are more data points. So, more number of uh, points should come and become as a, this should be assigned as a radial center. And these are sparsely, uh, say these data points are very sparsely located in this zone, then very few points should come and be assigned as the uh, radial center, that is the objective. Okay. So, that way we can fix the radial center. So, once the radial center is fixed, then the outputs are known, then these phi i's are fixed because phi i's are based on whatever the center, centers are fixed. So, phi i's are same, phi i is fixed uh, given a specific data point. So, given a specific data point, what we have now? No, these weights w i, phi i, sorry, I have to write like this. I have to write like this that this is a phi is a vector, w also is a vector. So, I have to write phi, yeah, phi i w i, this is right, phi i w i is same as uh, phi transpose w. Okay. So, this phi i w i is now y p. So, for each x p, I can collect this kind of equation all right so so my i have how many unknowns the w's are uh, you can see here the number of parameters now to be estimated are uh, this is actually not n this is h w h so the number of weights are h because centers are h so, number of weights are h for uh, single output radial basis function network. So, uh, if you look at, so we have, we have w i's i equal to 1 to h. Okay. So, for each input pattern, for a given input pattern, we compute this, we find out this equation phi transpose w is y p. So, like that how many equations we have p equal to 1 to uh, capital M, where M is number of uh, data pattern. Right. So, you have these many equations and how many unknowns? Unknowns are h, h number of weights, these are unknowns. So, obviously, normally the data patterns are many and h is usually h is less than, much less than m, h is much less than m. Okay. So, in a sense you have more number of equation less unknown. So, we can easily find a least square fit. So, that is the objective here. So, this is a least square problem assume a fixed radial basis functions Gaussian function. So, we assume that the all the radial centers in the hidden units are Gaussian functions. The centers are chosen randomly as I said the standard deviation of the radial function is determined by an ad hoc choice. Learning steps are as follows. The width is fixed according to the spread of the center. So, your phi i is exponential function or like a Gaussian function e to the power minus h upon d square and this is the norm 
x minus c Euclidean distance between x and c are square. Okay. So, this is the distance square. So, how do we find h is the number of centers and d is the maximum distance between the chosen center. So, what is meaning of this maximum distance between chosen center? If you go back, let us say that we have uh, two dimensional data x 1 and x 2. So, I have a data point uh, one cluster here, another cluster here okay, and all other clusters are like this. So, obviously, this cluster and this cluster the distance between this is maximum. Okay. So, similarly, once you have fixed the radial centers, find out two centers that have maximum distance between them. All right. Once we do that, then uh, that is d, that maximum distance is d. Okay. Then uh, obviously, if you look at that, uh, if I write this e to the power minus x minus c i uh, the Euclidean distance square by sigma square if I write, then sigma will become d upon root 2 h 2 sigma square. Normally, the, 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 the function is like this a z square by 2 sigma square. So, this is a normal form of a Gaussian function and if I represent this function as this which is written here, then obviously, sigma is d upon root over 2 h and d is the maximum distance between any two radial centers. So, we have already uh, now we will uh, formulate the problem. Problem is let us say phi is phi 1 phi 2 up to phi h it is a row vector it has taken here is a row vector phi. So, these are the output of the radial centers w is the weight vector this is a column vector and phi w is y d y d is the desired output. Eh? So, we are now only talking about a single output RBFN. You can also talk about multi uh, output the same this, the formulation will be same. So, required weight vector is computed as uh, so, so what I am trying to do here is that uh, we discuss uh, we will find pseudo inverse technique how to solve a radial basis function network. So, for a pth pattern phi p is a vector of phi 1 p phi 2 p up to phi h p. So, these are the outputs of the radial centers okay. and weight is w 1 w 2 w h and corresponding output is y d p. Similarly, we have n patterns if I write this in terms of matrix I can write a capital phi which is phi 1 1 phi 2 1 up to phi h 1. So, these are the radial center output for first pattern. Second pattern phi 1 2, phi 2 2 and phi h 2 and so on m mth pattern is phi 1 capital M, phi 2 capital M and so on phi h capital M this is my phi and correspondingly each one is multiplied with w. So, this let me not put it here this I put it here. So, this is my big phi and if I multiply with this with w 1 w 2 w h because they are fixed. Okay, they are fixed for a set of you know 
the, 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 the weights are fixed. What we are trying to do is that it is an offline tracking, uh, uh, it is an offline uh, training, a pseudo inverse technique. We will allow the patterns to pass through the network, compute the Y D, store them for M patterns and while doing all these things, weights are all fixed and hence what we are doing is we are keeping all those uh, the reg regression vectors which is phi 1 to phi 2, this phi vector and we are equating with the output. Obviously, phi 1 1, phi 2 1 up to phi h n if you multiplied with this weight vector corresponding output is y d 1 pattern. Second one is y d 2 and the m th one is y d m. So, what we got a matrix notation this is phi, this is weight and this is I can say capital Y all right. So, now you can easily see because output is a linear relationship has a really linear relationship with weight. So, we can always represent in terms of matrix format and the solution and you can easily see that y is m by 1 vector, w is h by 1 vector and, uh, and this uh, uh, the phi is m by h vector. Okay. So, the solution will be that phi uh, capital phi into w is y. So, this is uh, we found out this is m by h, h by 1 and this is m by 1. So, obviously, since this is not a square matrix, uh, we cannot invert it. So, the solution is very easy to find out when phi is a uh, square matrix and invertible. But when it is not a square matrix, what we can do? We use pseudo inverse technique. What is pseudo inverse? I multiply phi transpose phi w. So, phi transpose is h into m cross m cross h. So, this is h cross h matrix. Right? So, this is h cross h matrix and w is h cross 1 and here we multiply here uh, phi transpose y. Okay. So, this is h m m 1. So, this is again h cross 1. So, everything is satisfied. So, finally, the w is phi transpose phi inverse phi transpose y because this is now a square matrix, but this solution is possible only when. So, the solution that we got, we got the solution for w is now phi transpose phi inverse phi transpose y. So, this is known as pseudo. Uh, so, uh, see the solution is possible, solution is possible only when phi transpose phi inverse exist. Otherwise also we can use similar value decomposition. Singular value decomposition method when uh, the this this is uh, singular. Okay, singular means its determinant is zero. Okay. So this was a little mistake there. I corrected that. So what you found out that required weight vector W 
is phi transpose phi inverse phi transpose y d okay and this is known as the pseudo inverse of phi. This is possible only when phi transpose phi is non singular. If this is singular, singular value decomposition is used to solve w that is the summary. So, this is an example. Example is that we take a function uh, x nor a function 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 this is a x nor function. We select two centers. So, centers can be selected randomly from the input space. So, in input space we only we have, we have four data. So, we can select any one of them. Let us select 0 0 and 1 1 as the centers. So, C 1 is 0 0 1 of the center, the other center is 1 1. So, phi 1 is uh, uh, exponential minus x minus C 1 square and phi 2 is e to the power x minus C 2 Euclidean norm square. So, uh, where x is x 1 and x 2, this is the, the output y, y is w 1 phi 1 plus w 2 phi 2 plus theta. If you look at here, theta is the bias we have. Uh, so, this is the architecture we selected. This is the architecture radial basis function network architecture selected to learn the function x nor all right. And uh, we have taken two center radial centers and one bias, uh, the bias input is plus 1, the bias weight is theta all right. So, y is w 1 phi 1 plus w 2 phi 2 plus theta eh? and phi 1 phi 2 are computed according to this. We have four training patterns. So, if we compute uh, for each pattern the phi 1, uh, so the, the phi 1 for the first pattern uh, is 1 uh, is obvious because uh, uh, you can easily see here for the first pattern 0 0 and c 1 is 0 0. Obviously, e to the power this Euclidean distance is 0. So, e to the power 0 is 1. So, that is what you are saying. So, w 1 into phi 1, phi 1 is 0 here and phi 2 is e to the power minus 2 because the uh, Euclidean distance uh, is uh, root 2 and square is 2 e to the power minus 2. Uh, so, w 1 and we have taken here uh, to let you know that we have only taken e to the power Euclidean distance square that means sigma equal to 1 we have already selected. So, it is implies here uh, 2 sigma square is 1 right uh, in the Gaussian function. So, based on that for each pattern this is for 0 0, this is the, the next pattern 0 1, 1 0 and 1 1. Obviously, for 1 1 phi 2 is 1 all right. So, this is the four equations we have for four data pattern. If we form a matrix phi into w equal to y d phi w is y d. If we put this then y d is 1 0 0 1 that is the your uh, this is y d is 1 0 0 1 and uh, uh, this is your phi w. So, w is w 1 w 2 theta we have two weights and one bias. If you solve using pseudo inverse technique where w is phi transpose phi inverse phi transpose. So, this is inverse phi transpose. So, this is this value 2.5 2.5 minus 1.8 this is a column vector. So, this is the solution. So, uh, to conclude that if we have already a data some setup data input output data we have no restriction for online uh, training then pseudo, uh, pseudo inverse technique is good. So, if data set is already 
available and no demand on online training then sudo universe technique is a good approach to find weight vector w so this is our weight vector now the okay we talked about uh, pseudo inverse technique where we fix the radial center but imagine the situation where the data is coming online and we have to do online training okay like for example in control system in control system you know data you know when we do a control system data is coming online and uh, we have to train our controller online so, in that case, how the training should be done? So, gradient descent as usual. So, instantaneous gradient descent is a good method for it. So, this is a very again uh, the same methodology that once you are given instantaneous cost function E, C i j t plus 1 is C i j t minus eta 1 del E upon del C i j and this can be easily updated. And similarly, for weight also we can do the another gradient descent okay where where is the instantaneous cost function y d minus y okay these are instantaneous values these are all scalars not vectors so of course for uh, uh, just to give an example i'll be a little faster here because we have already discussed lot about gradient descent uh, derivation so our y is phi i w i phi i is e to the power minus z i square upon 2 sigma square, where z i is uh, x minus c i Euclidean distance between x and c i. Sigma is the width of the center differentiating e with respect to w i. Okay. So, you get this particular thing. Okay. So, obviously, the weight update is uh, Mm. weight update is w i t plus 1 is w i t plus eta error y d minus y into phi i. This is the weight update for uh, weights in radial basis function network that is very simple because it is a linear network. Whereas, uh, the weight update of uh, center imagine each center has uh, p elements because the x the input is p dimensional vector. So, that is why if you look at uh, the derivation del E upon del C i. So, this is uh, this particular thing first you differentiate E with respect to y, y with respect to phi i and C i is a phi i is a function of C i j and C i j is not uh, they are in any other uh, phi any other radial ra only ith uh, radial center contains the element c i j this is important and hence this expression is right. So, we already know del e upon del y is this del y upon del phi y is w i and to compute phi i by this we differentiate phi i with respect to z i z i with respect to c i j. So, when you differentiate phi i with respect to z i, we get z i upon sigma square phi i negative and similarly z i with respect to c i j, we get this expression. Right? So, we have now this is here negative, this is also negative, this is also negative. So, overall the sign of this expression is negative. So, c i j t t plus 1 is thus, this is our final expression for Gaussian centers. And this is for weights. So, this is a simple derivation you can verify for yourself. So, using this gradient online 
uh, training instantaneous gradient descent. Uh, we will now do a system identification of a source tank. We have already discussed what is a source tank. Source tank is you know is there to you know uh, uh, to minimize the effect due to sudden pressure or sudden pressure in the water reservoir. Normally in hydro power plant you have a water reservoir you know suddenly the level increases. Okay. So, then the from a water reservoir there is connection uh, to the turbine and other things. So, if the sudden uh, uh, increase is there then the flow increases. So, to maintain the same flow uh, we, we place a, a source tank here. Okay. So, the, the flow goes up and tank uh, height uh, the liquid level in the tank increases. So, if the source tank uh, the volume uh, is a nonlinear has a nonlinear relationship with the level h, then the one of the uh, model of such a source tank is this, which is a nonlinear model s t plus 1 is s t plus t into this, um, this quantity, where h t is the liquid level, u t is the flow inside this source tank. Uh, so, what you are seeing here let me do like this, this is our this is our reservoir. So, this is the water reservoir, this is the source tank and we are only concerned the model of this source tank and this model of the source tank is if the flow there is a certain flow rate into the tank then how the level of the tank increases. Okay. For a nonlinear thing this is the for a discrete dynamic model of the source tank uh, uh, please see that t into minus 2 square root 2 g h upon square root 3 h plus 1 plus u t upon 3 h t plus 1 square root. U t is the flow water flow into the source tank, h t is the liquid level, g is the gravitation uh, acceleration due to gravity, t is the sampling time and t is the sampling instant. So, data we have generated in the similar manner earlier we have done sampling time 0 0.01 150 data has been generated uh, using this data that our input flow is according to this particular curve and corresponding h t liquid level. So, this is your u t and this is your liquid level. corresponding liquid level. So, we selected a radial basis function network obviously, it has two input one target two input is u t and s t target is s t plus 1 uh, units in hidden layer are 30 number of input output data is 50 150 radial basis function is Gaussian width of radial function sigma is 0 0.707 center learning rate eta 1 is 3.0.3 weight learning rate is 0.2 and uh, this is the convergence you can easily see within 200 less than 200 epoch the convergence is achieved to achieve the RMS square root mean square error 0 0.007 below 0 0.007 and when we take give a new input uh, that is uh, the inflow flow follows this particular curve then the liquid level uh, the here the red curve you can see that red curve and the green curve these are all uh, uh, over, the, the, over the red curve there is the green curve and red is desired red is desired and the green is actual okay so you can easily see that the uh, the, the RVFN model that has been trained uh, uh, which is took 200 epoch could easily uh, map uh, or could easily the learn the dynamic of the source tank. So, this is the third. Uh, so, we talked about two different learning pseudo universe and gradient descent. Now, we will talk about a new uh, kind of learning that is normally employed for radial basis function network which is called hybrid learning. 
what is hybrid learning that center and weights are separated centers since they represent the clusters in the input space we can use unsupervised learning to learn the cluster uh, centers whereas the supervised learning for uh, for the weights so hybrid learning means unsupervised learning for uh, centers and supervised learning for weights. In hybrid learning, the radial basis functions relocate their centers in a self organized manner while that is the unsupervised learning while the weights are updated using supervised learning. When a pattern is presented to RVFN, either a new center is grown if the pattern is sufficiently novel or the parameters in both layers are updated using gradient descent. The taste of novelty depend on two criteria is the Euclidean distance between the input pattern the nearest center greater than threshold is the mean square error at the output greater than a desired accuracy. A new center is allocated when both criteria are satisfied. Okay. But uh, normally the best way is that uh, do the, the, the easiest way uh, to do this uh, center learning uh, using uh, classical uh, clustering is that we fix the number of centers, fix number of centers okay, and uh, assign them assign them random uh, in uh, vectors from the input space. This is the first step. This is the step one. In step two, this is the step two. What in step two we do? Once the centers are fixed, okay, uniformly sampled from the input space, then what we do? We present an input pattern, find the Euclidean distance between this input pattern and all these centers which are already fixed and the numbers are also fixed and then find the winner. Whichever is the winner, we update the weight of that winner. So, this is for the winner and for all other centers, we do not do any change. The centers remain as it is and we repeat this process for all the data set in the training set from the all the data pattern from the training set. So, this is called k means clustering, this is called k means clustering. So, not only this uh, radial centers can be used k means clustering, there are other clustering techniques, we will not now focus on that, we will just give an idea how this is done. So, clustering, so unsupervised manner and the, whatever, what about the uh, weights, weights can be used because weight and the output they have a linear relationship. We can use uh, any least mean square, we can use also gradient descent. Apart from gradient descent, we can also use the least mean square algorithm or recursive least square algorithm. Okay. Uh, there is also, uh, the re this is a recursive least square algorithm, I will not tell that in this class, maybe later. And uh, uh, same uh, the search tank also can be uh, model using this hybrid learning, uh, where k means clustering has been used with the learning rate 0 0.5, which is alpha, that is uh, uh, alpha is 0 0.5, and uh, the gradient descent method has been used for weight update, where the eta is this is eta, this is alpha, and uh, root mean square error. Uh, the, the, the training is terminated when root mean square error was less than 0 0.007. So, you can easily see uh, in the beginning the when we reshuffled this uh, the centers were uh, uniformly distributed. So, these are the centers 
this uh, squares uh, circles are the centers and this is my input data in the this is my u this is my uh, uh, h this is my h and this is my u okay so what you are seeing is that in the before unsupervised learning the centers are all uniformly I mean, randomly distributed and this is the data and as we presented data to the uh, centers using k means clustering you will see that most of these centers were aligned with the data input data and very few left unaligned okay so this is the uh, final comparison of the result what we are seeing is that when we train a search tank do the system identification of a search tank using uh, back propagation network that is multi layer network radial basis function network using gradient descent radial basis function network hybrid learning then the number of iterations that are uh, required you see that uh, back propagation takes uh, long time and the radial basis function network takes less time and uh, RMS error is same because we have uh, uh, fixed the RMS error uh, but the, 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 the training is terminated over the same RMS error. Okay. So, obviously, the same RMS error for the new data uh, that means generalization for uh, all the three networks are same. Okay. So, for in a conclusion is conclusion is that today we discussed RVFN network and we talked about three types of learning. First one is uh, pseudo inverse which is a offline training. Second is the normal gradient descent and third one is hybrid which is a combination of unsupervised plus supervised. Okay. So, thank you very much.